to make It's my new rebellious way So just give me no sound. Hmm. Is everybody else hearing me okay? Well done to all the squaddies who have been uh, donating. I think we're well over 35,000 for Archie's fundraiser. So well done everyone. Okay, you can all hear me now. All right, and there's nothing, um, you're not getting any muffling noises, no? All right. Oh, fantastic. Oh, it's over, thank you, Elaine Park. It's actually over 40,000. Well done, squaddies. I mean, we just show up and show out every single time for Harry, for Megan, for Archie, for Lily, for anything that... Um, for anything that is good, anything that is based around community, we will show up and show out. So thank you everybody who's donated. And if you can't donate, just um, just make sure to sh share the link. That helps as well. And I'm sure somebody will see it. And um, even, if, even if they don't donate, sharing that link, I think just spreads the word about the squad and all of the amazing and positive things um, that we do. And also after only about um, a day and a half of the fundraiser, um, out of 484 fundraising teams on the World Central Kitchen website, Sunset Squad is, well, the last time I checked was at number 16. It's probably a lot more now. And someone joked on Twitter that <laughs> we actually raised more money um, than what Keen is going to be paying her new assistant. Um, so congrats once again, everyone, and welcome everybody to the chat today. And make, please do make sure to thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We are well on our way to 9,000. So thank you, um, everyone. And so let's start off with the main news of the day. 
and that is our man Harry made an appearance. Now, initially, when oh, thank you so much, Pele Proscott, for the super sticker, much appreciated, darling. So initially, when this was posted on on Twitter, it was just a very, very, very short clip. Um, I I think it was only like eleven seconds. So we knew that something was coming, um, but they kept us in a little bit of anticipation. And essentially, Harry has, well, I would say he's launched, but he's extending his initiative with Travelist. And um, so this is his eco travel initiative. And he's launched a new campaign as part of Travelist, and it's inspired by Maori values. And Maori, of course, is a in I think it's an indigenous tribe from New Zealand. Please do correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what they are. And um, he actually uses uh, Maori uh, terms in the video. So if you want, to, I'm not going to play the whole video now because I don't know how copyright is going to feel about it. But I did actually post um, the video uh, previously, so you can go to the last video and and watch it in full. But I think what I love about this is is the fact that he is actually including Indigenous people in this conversation. Because this has been one of the biggest criticisms with the whole environment, um, environmental movement, is that the people who are going to be, who are being affected most, um, but live closest to the land and pollute the least, um, are not getting a seat at the table. You know, are not getting a seat at the most important tables. So to see um, Harry actually trying to involve Indigenous people like this and their voices and their traditions um, is amazing. And I think it shows that he's been listening and he's been paying attention and he's been doing his research um, also. So fantastic um, initiative and what, a, what an amazing way to um, expand on Travelist. Um, yes, Joyce, Harry has stayed involved with the Commonwealth countries, Canada. Um, New Zealand and Travelist, great job. Yes, indeed. Yes, Carolyn, watch on YouTube so they can get the clips. Uh, Darlene, Harry has been working continuously. I hope he takes a break. Don't want him to burn out. So much love for him and Megan. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, they're always working, even when we don't see them. In fact, I would argue that when we don't see them is when, we, is when they're working the most. We, we only um, see them when, like, the final, final product is here and ready to come out. So what a fantastic initiative. And um, we know that it's definitely ruffled um, some feathers, those that like to <laughs> copy and, and paste, literally. And so a couple of months ago, now oh, actually maybe not a couple of months ago, but a couple of weeks ago, it was announced that William was, or William's Earthshot, was nominated for a BAFTA TV award. So this is BAFTA TV, not uh, BAFTA movies. But um, Earthshot was nominated, I believe, for Best Live Show. And instantly this raised some eyebrows because William is the BAFTA president. He also uh, has given BAFTA awards out and now he's a BAFTA winner. <laughs> so he's essentially just awarded himself. And also... He hired the former head of BAFTA to replace Jason Knopf as the head of um, his charity with Kate. And that BAFTA, um, former BAFTA boss who he hired to replace Jason Knopf has been um, involved in uh, rows um, concerning the BAFTA awards before. So... All, all around, just very fishy, very suspicious, and a clear conflict of interest. And it's not much of a surprise because, let's face it, um, instead of trying to find his own path, William is essentially, you know, chasing the, t the tail of his brother. And Catherine, too, uh, the tail of um, Meghan. It's almost like they can't have an identity or sense of self without looking over, um, you know, at the next house. And really and truly, they William and Kate had all the time to 
become their own people. They had a whole decade of marriage. And both of them had a whole decade before that as their own people. And while they were still dating, to um, do all kinds of projects. Um, especially for Catherine, I, I still don't know why, if she knew she was going to be a royal wife, and that's what she was chasing, if she would not do more to bring something to the table. But let's face it, I guess royal wives, especially royal wives in Britain anyway, um, aren't really expected to bring anything to the table. And so as a result, we have a situation where both of them are trying to play catch up with Harry and Meghan. And it's like you're, you're, it's like you're a turtle trying to play catch up with Usain Bolt. It's just not possible. Oi. Um, Joyce, hopefully Harry and Meghan will take some time off with their children this summer. Yeah, I'm sure they'll go somewhere nice on holiday. Lots of uh, great national parks in the US and the world is opening up. Uh, I only noticed the other day, uh, Vietnam is now open. Uh, Thailand is now open. Uh, so lots of lots of countries opening up. <laughs> yeah, Hannah, corruption. <laughs> Elita Tantrum Award. Yeah, he threw the biggest tantrum. Uh, Darlene, speaking of BAFTA, my daughter and her partner won BAFTAs for being TV critics on Googlebots. No way. That is amazing. Round of applause for Darlene's daughter and her partner. Google Box, that's that's the show where um you have like the different families and friends sitting on the couch. And yeah, they're like they critique stuff on TV, right? I think I've seen that. Yes, Rose, a cocktail of uh, corruption and conflict of interest. Uh, Darlene, they're always on holidays, that's why they don't have a glue. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. And uh, Facts and Two Cents uh, did point this out. I didn't actually know this. Um, but Facts and Two Cents said, so Prince William, who's the president of BAFTA, won a BAFTA for his Earthshot Prize. Should Ignis shops be celebrating as well? And so the president of Europark in the shop calls for hashtag Earthshot after Kennedy moonshot to reach a sustainable planet within a decade. Let's go for it. So I guess um, what this is saying was that the idea was taken from someone else, like literally with the same name. Is that right? Because it's not even like they use a different name. It's literally the same name. And I think that says a lot about the staff in Kensington Palace. And we say this all the time. They don't have an original bone in their body. So not only are they uh, copying Harry and Meghan, they're just copying everyone else and not even remembering to change the name. So that was that. And apparently now, uh, William and Kate would like us to call them Wills and Kate or just William. Um, and so, as someone pointed out on, on Twitter, I don't uh, take ownership of this screenshot, but there was a whole bunch of articles about, you know, Harry saying, just call me Harry. And we know that um, Harry says that to people all the time when they meet him, you know, just call me Harry. Don't call me Prince Harry. Don't bow. I've seen videos of uh, Meghan where like people went to bow and she went in to hug them instead. Um, so I, um, I don't know this could just, we know that the, the houses like to leak, but we also know that the press, um, just like supposed silly stories, but would it surprise me if they're trying to now become more personable, more, or at least appear more down to earth in the same way Harry and Meghan are naturally, it's not like they have to put it on, uh, probably. I'm sure they're throwing absolutely everything on the wall and hoping that it sticks. Especially after um, what an amazing success Invictus was. And we know that Invictus really, really shook them. So much so um, that you had things like this coming out. And so 
um, about a couple of weeks ago, we had the throw him over the balcony comment from Eamon Holmes, which I think is still being investigated by Ofcom. So Ofcom launched the investigation because of complaints. And I think this was only yesterday. This was tweeted. Royal Poll, would you boo Meghan and Harry if they appeared on the palace balcony? This is just disgusting. And I, I, I can't even believe that they would, well, I guess I can believe <laughs> that they would do a poll like this, but it's just sunk to such a new low now. Would you boo Meghan and Harry? Not would you boo Har uh, Andrew, the nonce. No, not him. Would you boo Meghan and Harry? And of course, this is the Daily Express. I tell you something, wherever, and somebody, somebody else said this on Twitter, wherever Harry and Meghan are, that's where the balcony is. Even if they're not standing on a balcony. They could be standing below the balcony. That is where the balcony is, where they are. And I think that the royal, the other royals know this. They know that what people are excited to see now, and certainly what the press, because they want the money, are excited to see now, are Harry and Meghan. So this, I just see this as... Um, calls coming from inside the house and are lashing out because they're jealous okay so William stole the idea from Igna's shops <laughs> and he just put his name to it right uh, Raven yes Earth is stolen not the original idea uh Adore. So they've been running behind Harry and Meghan about titles and now they are going to follow them and not using titles, really? Well, like we've always said in the squad, for those who like Harry and Meghan, we don't care about their titles. Um, Harry and Meghan could, could call themselves Orange and Lemon. I wouldn't care. I would still love them. <laughs> it's like, it's because of what they do as people, the way they give back, um, the way they inspire others the way they inspire others to be giving and to create community and what they stand for, what they've always stood for. Meghan, from the time that she was a young girl, Harry, starting Centre Barley at the age of 19, that is why we love Harry and Meghan. So I don't care if it's a Duke and Duchess, Sir and Madam, Orange and Lemon, I don't care. And I don't think anybody in the squad does. It's only people in these circles that care about those silly titles. Yes, William. Um, yes, Wendy. William and his team are very lazy with the copy and paste work. L lack um, of ethics. Well, um, Earthshot is still due to, if things go to plan, and pretty much every tour or visit has, has gone down the drain uh, this, this year, they are still due to apparently go to the US. So um, we've still got that to witness. Uh, Fertumata, they should keep it up. People are catching up to their nonsense, indeed, and it's non squaddies as well. Yes, Ginger, this is it says a plenty of balcony to stand on in Montecito. My darling, I never clicked the media tabloids, they are so sick and jealous, indeed. And you know what, you don't have to, <laughs> so. I um I absorb the nonsense so that you don't have to and I bring it to you. <laughs> Joyce, that island has showed the world exactly what they are. Harry and Meghan don't need to be on that balcony. The question now is where can we see them? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. That's all I want to know. I am not interested in this jubbly at all. I just want to see Harry and Meghan. Like I was even joking on Twitter the other day. I regret um booking my trip um for, for the start of the jubbly because all this time I was convinced that Harry and Meghan weren't gonna go. <laughs> so you know the first few days of uh my holds I will be keeping an eye on uh what's going on with the jubbly. Uh 
yes, Trinette, that's why he needs Harry. Harry is the genius behind everything they did before Meghan and Boldy took the shine. Well, just look at Heads Together. Have you heard anything about Heads Together? Uh, Lynn, it just makes the tabloids look hypocritical. Why don't they focus on the Queen as they profess all the time? Exactly. They have a whole Queen, a whole future, 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 and a future, future, future. And they're focused on Harry and Meghan. <laughs> or orange and lemon. Do you know what? I think I'm just going to lovingly call Harry and Meghan orange and lemon from now on. <laughs> it's going to be my new nickname for them. Uh, my point of view, Duchess of Success, I do feel your pain for your country and countrymen. How much lower can they go? And the whole world loves Harry and Meghan. Yeah, I mean, th all of this is just making the UK look awful. And if the jubbly is meant to be the cherry on top of a 70-year cake, and this is the lead up to it, they are making an absolute circus out of all of this. Uh, Angela, Meghan and Harry are the royals that's putting a dent in their pocket book. The others aren't making the money. That's why they're mad, indeed. Mm. Uh, Kerry and Beckford, titles are a big deal in aristocracy in England, but they don't mean anything outside of England. Yeah, no, they don't. They really don't. Uh, Dolores, Tom Bauer is releasing a new book in a few weeks to Dragon Meghan. How many books are they going to release for the... <laughs> Is anybody actually even reading these books? What are the book sales for these books? Please, somebody research that. Uh, Cho, Facts and Two Cents had a whole segment reading from an article in great detail of the original of uh, one European guy who started the Earthshot Project. Thank you so much for saying that. I'm going to go look for that video. I did not know that. I'll go hunt for that video. Everybody else go watch it as well. Wendy, I hope this doesn't just come for the Jubilee. Have Lily Christian and leave immediately. Sounds like a plan. Uh, Lydia, don't forget Harry sees that balcony differently. He says it's like being in the zoo and people coming around to look at them. Watch Oprah interview again. Yeah, and this is why I'm convinced that Harry and Meghan did not want to be on that balcony anyway. And why they tried to make it look like the Queen banned them from the balcony. I mean, look at the difference in the way in which that whole thing was reported by the royal rodents like Rebecca English, saying the Queen um, has taken decisive action amid continuing fa family fallout and ruled that only working royals will join her at the balcony at Buckingham Palace marked a platinum jubilee. That means Harry and Meghan um, will not get an invitation, nor will the shame Duke of York. And again, continuing to put Harry and Meghan in the same sentence sentences as Randy Andy. You know, decisive. There's no decisive action. I don't think that Harry and Meghan wanted to be on that balcony at all. I just don't. And, you know, I know that a um, couple of squaddies have gotten quite upset, actually, about the fact that Harry and Meghan are going at all. And, guys and dolls, I think we have to remember that, you know, we don't know everything that goes on behind closed doors. We don't know these people when it comes down to it. And we just have to trust Harry and Meghan as fans. We have to just be fans and trust Harry and Meghan's judgment. And also understand that um, they too, to a certain degree, have to um, play, play on the chessboard. It's like this whole family is on a chessboard. Um, trying to outmaneuver the other and survive. So we just have to trust that um, Harry and Meghan know their game. And so far, they have been playing checkers and not chess. So uh, please, you know, I've seen a lot of people, you know, worrying and why are they doing this? And why would Meghan go back? And, you know, I've, I think that it's important for um, people to see uh, that just because somebody tried to chase you away um you know oh, sorry that you that you don't have to be bullied um into being 
chased away and you can still come back to get what's rightfully yours. And I think what's rightfully um, Harry and Meghan's and their children's is the right to return to the UK safely if they want to. And clearly they want to. And they shouldn't have to be bullied into staying away. And I, and I, I, I love this for them. I love that they're coming back. I love that um, after all of the abuse that they remain defiant. And um, I actually think that it's, it's going to be great in the end. And I can't wait to see them. I, I certainly can't wait to see what Megan's going to wear. Hi, everyone. If you're joining us, please do remember to thumbs up. Angela, we may see Harry and Meghan at their charities, not the procession, having fun in the gardens with their charities. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. Because if they're not going to be on the balcony, then what's the point of, would they be in the procession? Because they usually are all in the procession and then they ride down and then they appear on the balcony. They have, by the way, now closed off um, the roads towards Buckingham Palace. So preparations have begun. Yes, Annie, I haven't heard anything about Heads Together since um, Harry left either. And um, where did I? I think it, wait, hang on a sec. There was another slide that I had, but I don't think it's downloaded. Please give us a sec. Hmm. Uh, Faith, William and Kate can copy every found way with the titles. What are their friends going to do after having been shouting at the top of their voices for the Queen to strip her, <laughs> stripping away Harry and Meghan's titles? Yeah. Like, what now? What now? Uh, Lydia, the hate of the British media has quickened the illness of the Queen. She just cancelled parliamentary outing tomorrow. Oh, did she? Didn't hear about that. Thanks for letting us know. Yeah, you know, they're always going on about how Harry and Meghan are stressing out the Queen. And, like, what? Your consistent... Um, your consistent hounding isn't stressing her out? Rambo. <laughs> Matty Rambo, you're writing a book too. <laughs> What's the book about? I feel like the whole squad should get together and... <laughs> I feel like we should all get together and write a book about the Royal Reporters. That's what we should do. <laughs> yeah, every, everybody and their grandmama is writing a book. Oh, okay. So Sorry, this was a slide that was still loading. So, to mark Mental Health Awareness Week, Prince William and Duchess Kate, this is a tweet by Omid, will take over Friday's mental... Um, health Minute broadcast, which goes out to over 20 million people via 500 UK radio stations. This year's theme is loneliness and it's to support the Every Mind Matters initiative. Now, the other day, um, Catherine appeared in a video talking about, um, I think it was maternal health and helping women um, when they're having a baby and, and with stress. And of course, people were quick to point out uh, the hypocrisy of her doing that when they ignored Meghan's struggles in the palace. So to now see both William and Kate, who are going to take over this uh, mental health minute, first of all, I'm interested to see what the listening figures were, because going out to 20 million people, but are 20 million people going to be listening? And it it certainly does reek of hypocrisy, given that they didn't listen to Meghan's concern, sorry, Meghan's concerns when she was in still in the royal family, and the fact that they have done nothing for heads together, or nothing that I um nothing impactful that I can see more recently. So I'm I'm wondering why heads together is not involved in this or they're not helping to promote Heads Together if it is Mental Health Awareness Week. It's like they've jumped ship to something else. 
and heads together seems to have been just left behind. Yes, Angela, everybody's waiting for Harry's book. We're not interested in the others. Yes, Elaine, I believe that Harry said no to the balcony appearance. The excuse was made um, by the royal family. Uh, Kathy, yes, when I hear the woman saying on the NBC podcast, say how sweet it's going to be to see the queen holding Lily for her first birthday and Katie is the one taking the picture. <laughs> How low can they go? Yeah, something just tells me that you're not going to see Harry and Meghan and William and Kate in the same room. With the Queen, yes. With Charles, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, but I don't think with William and Kate. And also, um, yes, Princess Diana's family, Reba. I do think that Harry will take the children to, to Althorpe, for sure. Um, there's no way. There's no way they'd expose those children to the balcony. <laughs> Gloria, the press will be hiding in every bush and every grass and drain just to get a photograph of Harry and his family. I'm sure Harry didn't want his family on that balcony. No way. No way. Don't be kidding. And yes, Marina, they're not part of the establishment. So why would they want to be on that damn balcony? Like Joyce, if the Queen does not show up on the <laughs> on the balcony, uh, there really is any more that's going to be on the balcony. Nobody wants... Yeah, exactly. It would just be uh, William and Kate. All those other people. I mean, I think there's officially 18 working royals. I don't even know who some of those other people are. Uh, P. Torma, well said. Regarding their visit to the UK, also how they managed the Invictus Games and the quiet visit to the Queen. Yeah, and they're still ruffled about that as well. They are absolutely still ruffled about that as well. Hi, Tim's husband. How are you? All right, so uh, that is that. Was there any? Yeah, there wasn't. Uh, there wasn't really anything else I wanted to mention. Um, I did hear that. Uh, well, I'm going to mention this on the screen in a second. But I did hear that apparently a deranger donated to the Sussex Squad's Archie birthday celebration fundraiser for World Central Kitchen, and. <laughs> When I when I read the message, I was just like, please let this be a squaddy trolling. Please let this be a squaddy trolling. But then I remembered some time ago, there was someone who had posted, oh, I'm so annoyed by Meghan Markle that I'm going to um, buy the whole Smartworks collection and the Together cookbook just to see how awful it is. And this this was actually like a woman who had a whole Facebook profile. Like it wasn't like a bot or anything like that. And she literally said she was going to buy the Smart Words collection and the cookbook uh, just to see how terrible it was. She's going to spend her money on Megan. Like that. That is how obsessed and deranged. So I'm willing to actually believe that the person who donated to the fundraiser could have actually been a deranger and not just a squaddy trolling. Although if it was a squaddy trolling, I'm not mad either because that issue was funny. Uh, Karen M, the, the royal family doesn't care about the queen. They are just waiting for her to pass. Well, like I said, I mean, we don't um, know what goes on day to day. But if William and Catherine were visiting the queen regularly in her old age, we would definitely know about it. I mean, we get a whole breaking news report anytime the queen moves from one castle 
to the other. So where are her family who are meant to be so close to her at this time? It seems like nobody other than courtiers and advisors are around her. And then you've got the likes of Angela Kelly, her, who's meant to be her dresser, although I think she's retired now, um, who's mouthing off to the press about how the Queen made her uh, drink gin. So I can see why Harry was so concerned because I didn't actually think about this when he first said it. But for him to say it means that Kate, William, Charles, everybody that's meant to be protecting her isn't. And I didn't actually think about that until literally yesterday. Yes, Joyce. The only book I'm buying is Harry's. The other, the rest of these people are insane. It's like, how many books can you write? <laughs> yes, Pam. <laughs> Let's write a book. <laughs> we'll make up a lot of crazy stuff. Honey, we don't actually have to make it up. The last five years has been insane. We could write a whole book, a whole screenplay, and send it to Netflix. There's enough material. Uh, Chef Sandy. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad you love my look. I'll put the uh, picture on the screen when we finish. But yeah, I just wanted to end by, um, I saw this news article pop up today in the Huffington Post. Millions of people in Britain are skipping meals due to the cost of living crisis. Some 2.4 million people saying that they've gone a whole day without eating because they couldn't afford or get access to it. Now, mind you, we have more food banks in this country than McDonald's outlets. And people are still going hungry. We have normalized food banks. And um, someone tweeted, just seen a proud Tory on BBC saying Johnson is naughty but nice, but worse was to come. Asked about the cost of living crisis, he said, I've had to reduce my golf membership from seven to five days a week. He laughed. No empathy, no understanding. I'm all right, Jack. That's the Tory. So we're having a whole jubbly to celebrate Her Majesty, Queen of Britain, the United Kingdom and its realms. And some 2.4 million people are saying that they have gone a whole day without eating because they couldn't afford to get access to it. They couldn't afford food. And there are some people that even if they can't afford the food, you know what they can't afford? They can't afford the gas prices. And, you know, around about this time last year, I got really serious about prepping. You guys know I'm a prepper. I have a prepping channel. I don't update it regularly. I really got into prepping. I got into um, food storage. People laughed at me. I got into off-grid, you know, methods of cooking. People laughed at me. A lot of people saw this coming. And it's just unfortunate because the people who are the poorest in this country are going to suffer the most. So please, uh, I'm, I'm very lucky to be in the position that I'm in. And I don't just prep for myself. I prep for others too. Um, I do donate to my local food bank as and when I can. Um, if so, a lot of the prepping food that, you know, maybe it goes off. Um, or before it goes off, before I rotate, sometimes I'll, you know, give that to uh, the food bank as well. And if you're in the position where you can give, please do, because this is what we're facing right now. And, um, you know, 2.4 million people. Can you imagine those, uh, that amount of people marching down to Buckingham Palace on the day of the Jubilee? Because really, why are we having this whole event if people in this country are suffering? Hmm. Joyce, um, they have done nothing with Heads Together and shout the program um, Harry and Meghan initiated. Yeah. It's like they just left it out in the cold. Okay, I didn't have um, anything else really to add today. So we're going to keep it nice and short. Um, yeah. I'll just put a picture up of my... <laughs> lovely weekend thank you everyone for your um comments about my outfit in the community section yeah i'm going for like a very girly feminine look now i went um through a very grungy look throughout the lockdown 
And uh, we're back to the prettiness in the pink. And uh, brunch was lovely over the weekend. So let's get to your comments. Always remember to treat yourself, guys and dolls. Self-care. Self-care and live that soft life. Um, Gwendolyn, so true. This is where Prince Harry was born. Why not come to his country? He's not going into exile for no one. The enemy is not going to win. Yeah, and that's essentially what they tried to do. Put them into exile. So they didn't feel safe to come back. And they didn't feel safe, quite frankly, to go anywhere in the world. Um, because that's what they want. They don't want Harry and Meghan to be seen. They don't want Harry and Meghan to be seen in the UK. They don't want them to be seen internationally. Because then they'll overshadow them. And they have to continue to play catch up. A classy, I think Harry knows that it might be the last chance for him and his children to see the Queen. Yeah, it kind of seems like it, doesn't it? I mean, I honestly think that the Queen's going to live to 100. I really do. Um, but it, she still seems to be very cognitive and, and chatty and smiley. So it's the best time uh, for the grandkids to see her, for her to see the grandkids. Well, Wendy, I cannot wait for the Dutch Megan podcast. It's going to be fabulous. Yes, absolutely. And I, I'm pretty sure they're going to drop it just after the jubbly. Because they said summer, right? So like late June, early July, they'll be the thick of summer. All right, carry on. I'm sure most of the royal family can't stand William and Kate. Well, there was an article sometime back about Kate making, was it Beatrice cry? I mean, can you imagine knowing that you're going to have to bow to these people one day. Won't Eugenie and Beatrice and Sophie and uh, Edwina, when they have to bow to Kate and William? That's a very weird family. Uh, Kefna, Lily but may get Christian if she hasn't already. Yeah. But Audrey, Harry and Meghan never said that they were going to Christian Lily in the UK. She's about to be one. We'll assume she's already Christian. Um, I'm wondering, does anybody know? Are there are there traditions about the children in the royal family being Christian at a certain time or place? I'd be interested to know that. Um, I mean, it's it's just a a, a guess. Like nobody knows for sure, Audrey, but. I th I think it would be nice if she if she was. We'll have to wait and see. Yes, Dolores. None of these authors has written a book um, without even meeting Megan. Yeah. Then you had um. What's her name? The troll Angela Levine, who wrote a book about Harry after only meeting him for 15 minutes. Uh, Matty, I think they're going to do a portrait of the Queen and her great-grandchildren. That'll be nice. Karen, <laughs> what is the purpose of the balcony? Well, the balcony moment is after they've done the whole procession and blah, blah, blah. And then they all just stand there and wave at the peasants. Go back to the other um, Jubilee. Was it the golden or the silver? Whichever it was. And then you can see the balcony moment. I think Will I Am was there. Cheryl Cole was there. Back when she was still called Cheryl Cole. I don't know what she calls herself now. But you know what? The last Jubilee, I'm not going to lie. Like, I actually enjoyed it. Because obviously I had a very different outlook on the royal family back then. But it was actually quite a nice event. Um, but how times have changed. I mean, even Charles. Charles was quite funny. He He... He cracked a joke and he said, um, um, Her Majesty, Mummy, and everybody laughed. I mean, it was actually a great show, but uh, these are different times and we see things very differently. Um, V Cobb, but seven of 18 working royals are too old, they can't work. 
But they're still taking taxpayer money. They're still taking taxpayer money, so they better be doing something. Zoom calls at least. Uh, Mr. Point of View, Hedges Together have died because Harry took the plans after erasing the dots by number of the chalkboard. So DNC is standing there. <laughs> what do we do next? Yeah. All righty. Who is going to... Shil Stewart, I love these little... <laughs> little emojis that you're doing. Um, okay, who's going to get the last word of the day? It's not going to be a long one, guys and dolls. Let's keep it short and sweet today. But thank you, everyone, for coming. Nothing has changed since the 1400s. Serve to the crowd and the Tory party, indeed. Uh, P. Torma, the Sussex Squad podcast is a book in itself. Yeah. Um, has anybody actually seen Netflix cameras following them in the UK? Who? We're following you in the UK, darling. They, they keep talking about how, um, you know, Harry wants to uh, bring the Netflix crew and, and and use a Netflix. and It's just so ridiculous. I, I honestly don't think that they're going to be filming anything with Netflix in the UK. Like nothing. Um, and nothing, or even if they do, I don't think it's going to be anything, it's not going to be anything that puts the royal family in a bad light. It's just, they, let me tell you, they are still, um, very, very peeved that the Netflix still ever happened. They are still peeved. And I don't think that they will ever let it go. So you're going to keep... And I've seen them the last week. Um, lots of headlines about Netflix this and Netflix that. Just remember that it's just all for um, all for the drama, guys and dolls. Thank you so much, Wendy. Thank you, everyone. Yes, femininity never goes out of style. And I, I think I'm definitely reconnecting with my femininity a lot more. Um, Margarita, when are you going to show your prep channel again? People laughed at me, but when we needed it most, they stopped laughing quick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I just haven't really had the time to update it. Like every, to be honest, I'll probably do a video on there once a month or something. And if I do do a video, I'll let you know. Otherwise, um, I can't say that it's my main priority because I'm um, spend a lot more time prepping in person. And it takes a lot of work to do those prepping videos, more work than it takes to do these type of videos. Uh, Beverly, Netflix already have the crown, so why would they be from the Jubilee? No, I think they're talking about um, Harry and Meghan's actual team filming them. Uh, Verda, you did the right thing, Duchess, because my grandmother always told us when we were little coming up, always have more food than what you need and water because you never know what's coming. Yeah. I don't know how after the last two years people kind of still um, uh, look down upon or kind of laugh at the idea of prepping. I don't know if they think that like everyone who's a prepper is like some doomsday, you know, type with, um, you know, 100 cupboards of pasta. And it's just like, I would I would never prep for the end of the world. Like, that's silly. You're meant to prep to get over disasters. If I knew the end of the world was coming, I wouldn't be a prepper. What's the point? Um, but uh, you save uh, water in big bottles. And yeah, yeah, there's, there's lots of like different stuff that you can do. B, you know, B Cobb, this is why they are coming to cement the kids in the future royal photos of the Queen. You see, it's when the kids are old. Yeah. 
I mean, even though I obviously have my own opinions just about the Queen and the whole institution, I feel like this is this is good for them. I love this for Harry and Meghan because it shuts down the haters. It shuts down the press. When those pictures come out of them, the kids and the Queen, it's going to shut them up. So I love this for them. Regardless of my own personal opinions about the Queen. I love this for Harry and Meghan. Kathy, 20 years from now, you will ask a young man about Kate. They will know if you were to 10 years for a man to marry her. Well, as harsh as that comment is, it's kind of true. Do you know what? I might actually do an experiment and I'll I'll ask people who I don't know and who, who aren't um, familiar with my channel um, what their opinions on, on Kate her what what are their opinions on Kate's initiatives and her charity work and see if any of them can actually name or say anything that's going to be an interesting um, experiment thank you Valerie and classy. Thank you, everyone. Emerald, Netflix is about Invictus, not the Jubbly. I think what, what the headlines um, keep getting at is um, that, they're tr that they're basically trying what to turn the visit to the Jubbly into some circus reality TV show. And I think part of it is to distract from the fact that the net, that the Invictus um, documentary is coming. But yes, Netflix is, they're only filming um, for Invictus. As far as we know. They could be filming other stuff with Harry and Meghan too. Um, thank you so much to the moderators also. Okay, Wendy, I'm going to give you the last word of the day, Wendy. It's only Monday. Stay positive and be safe, everyone. Thank you so much um, for the super stickers, super chats. Thank you so much, new members and also members um, who have upgraded. Thank you so much also. Have a fabulous, fabulous week, everyone. And I guess if there is any important news, I will see you tomorrow. Bye. I know I messed it up, but in my soul.